Uh, uh, Isaac Henderson, I'm here. Uh, I'll be presenting the lead uh, MC for our team. Great, great. All right. Well, I'll uh, see if you can get in. You have a you have a presentation you want to put up? Yes, I. Yeah, so yeah, well, if you're ready, Phil, you ready for us to start? I think I am, yes. I think we, we'll go forward now. Okay, go ahead. So, you know, just as sort of just as ways of introduction, I'm Isaac Henderson. Uh, I'm the development director at Lendlease, um, overseeing the development of uh, one job. I'm joined by my colleague Hirosato, who's also here on the phone at Lendlease. Um, as most of you know, we purchased the property um, uh, back in October. Um, and I'm also joined today by uh, by uh, uh, James Field uh, Corner Operations um, and uh, Marvel Architects, who are the landscape and waterfront designers, as well as the building architect. Um, and we're really here to show you guys and update you guys where we are on our, our waterfront uh, design and process. Um, we've done a pretty significant amount of community outreach and met with a number of you already, uh, but we're really sort of anxious to sort of get feedback on our design and just sort of talk with you. Um, I did want to state before uh, we got into the presentation, just to update this group. You know, I know a lot of people of uh, uh, the New York City uh, ferry stop at Greenpoint in the neighborhood, um, which is associated with the site. Um, just for those who don't know, or just to give you an update on that, um, you know, around a month ago, uh, the ferry uh, was landing at what we call the floating barge, which is different, obviously, than the which is connected to the India Street fixed pier. Um, and when it was docking um, at around 843 that evening, it was discovered that the piles that were uh, holding the floating barge um, were compromised. Um, and the, at that time, the barge was then taken out of service um and 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 is is currently being looked upon um you know i just want to sort of one a say the india street pier itself remains open it's structurally sound it's not a problem it's just the floating barge which was the issue um this barge was built prior to our owning of the property um you know but we remain absolutely committed to returning the barge as well as the ferry service there we view it as a huge amenity resource for the community as well as for our site degree, but also, you know, as, as much as we're committed to, to return it, we also want to make sure that we return it so it's safe. Uh, and then also, we also want it to be a sustainable solution. Uh, so we, since it's been taken out of commission, we've been working collaboratively with our partners at EDC in the city of New York, as well as the ferry operator Hornblower, um, you know, to, to, to work with them to navigate this process. Um, you know, so that's that's sort of step number one. Uh, step number two, we are working and engaged heavily with our engineers to sort of come up with a design solution, which, you know, will definitely modify what was there before to ensure that it, it's, you know, more secure and safe, um, as well as sort of beginning to navigate, which could be a process to work through the permitting as well, because it will require permits to uh, reinstall the floating barge as well. So we're in the process of sort of navigating that as well. Um, we don't have all the answers today, uh, both on sort of what that final solution is going to be or the time frame. Um, you know, we have a, a email set up uh, one Java at lendlease.com that will be presented to you at the end of the, the project. I, many of you are already on it. We're at least we're presenting biweekly updates. And as we get more understanding of the timing and solution, we'll continue to broadcast and to be as transparent as possible. Um, but, you know, we really want to make sure that whatever solution we have is safe, secure and sustainable. Um, and we're working as hard as we possibly can to bring the ferry service back. I see somebody has their hand raised. I don't know if I should be. Yeah, there's, I'm, but, I'm Steve Chesler. Yeah, uh, I'm glad, glad to hear considering uh, redesigning that because through where this is the second time that the uh there was a problem with the pier the last time i guess the ramp um fell into the water um due to a loose uh, pile or something along those lines so it's um happy to hear that they're considering um you know i guess redesigning that uh, because it, it here's what what this original design is not working that right uh, yeah, I mean, I think we're still Steve, in the process of really understanding fully what happened, you know, engaging the engineers, engaging the metallurgists related to the piles, you know, looking at all those things. But yes, we 
we whatever solution we come up with, we're going to ensure it's going to be different than what was currently there, and it will be you know under the consideration to be you know safer and more sustainable than it was before. Should I so, share the know, presentation? Yeah. So why don't we turn to the presentation? Yeah. Everybody sees the screen? Yes. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, Isaac, I'll let you start. So I think, you know, we're here in front of you guys tonight as part of a just sort of a, you know, an overall community engagement feedback waterfront. We really view, um, you know, taking the space in front of our building uh, as a significant community benefit, amenity, something that we really wanted to be that reflects the sort of the desire for the community. Understanding obviously there's constraints related, you know, to what DCP, this apartment city planning has, but, you know, since we purchased the property uh, back in October, um, we've been working with a number of neighborhood organizations as well as state and federal and local uh, elected uh, leaders. Um, the groups and elected officials engaged are listed here. Um, so we've been, um, you know, presenting this plan similar to what you're going to see tonight um, and soliciting feedback and, and where possible and, and applicable to try and incorporate many of these ideas into the plan. And we're really here in front of you just to sort of ensure that we're we're meeting with the right people and engaging that feedback is, a, is casting a larger net as we possibly can. Um, we will then hear some feedback and get some back from you and then throughout the summer the the application is still being reviewed by the department of city planning but the the plan is that they will refer it to the larger community board in september um so that's sort of the process and the timeline um and then karen's going to go through where we are today but uh that's sort of our community engagement today and and this is an important part of that engagement process so Karen, you want to sort of go yep. through what we've been doing so I'll, far? I'll take it over. Yeah, I'm Karen Tamir. Hi, everybody. I, think hi, Karen. I see a lot of familiar faces and names. Uh, so hi, everyone. Um, as Isaac mentioned, we started to meet with community groups uh, at first to really uh, listen. It, it, the first uh, few meetings uh, didn't really have any proposal in front of them. It was more to... Uh, tease out what really is important to the community, to the groups, to, to, to this area. So what we heard in a kind of a broad brush, this, this is a summary of, of things, is that the waterfront should feel public and inclusive. It should attract diverse demographic and there should be something for everyone. The streets, so India Street, Java Street, West Street should all feel pedestrian and bike friendly. Uh, importantly, the connection to the waterfront from the neighborhood should be easy and accessible. Uh, there's a preference to see a neighborhood park, one that is lower key, uh, as opposed to a destination park that draws large amount of people from outside. Uh, connection and access to the water is critically important and was noted in all the meetings uh, that it's an important component. Uh, generally, the park, there's a preference for softer, curvy, uh, linear, uh, softer uh, geometries, uh, immersive in nature, narrower paths, uh, intimate spaces, denser planting, shade, and use of native species. The water's edge include get downs, soft edges, uh, where possible, no bulkheads and minimize guardrails, um, avoid hardscape and hard edges. Uh, we have some conversation about concession, um, and for the most part, we heard that something small and seasonal, like an ice cream cart, might be appropriate for the waterfront. Uh, and within the building, there's concession that, uh, or, or you know, uh, cafes and things like that, that would also support the waterfront. Um, lighting, keep low levels, intimate, cognizant of wildlife and dark skies, uh, peer upgrades, their discussion about shelters from the rain, wind, sun, and generally uh, maintenance is preferred to be from the developer uh, to, co to continue to develop this area. Uh, later on, we also heard, the, you know, over the course of the meeting that the reprieve might prevent close contact with the water. So we were asked about that. Uh, there were, again, the soft line, curvilinear uh, community boat or kayak launch was brought up. Uh, and then again, the preference that the maintenance is handled by the owner, 
uh, and then the desire for waterfront programming for the community. Some of the valued programs that were brought up were balance active and passive recreation, education was brought by almost all the groups, uh, environmental, historical, local women, aquatics, uh, ecology, and all of that. Uh, water dependent program. Uh, we also talked about the dog run community space and spaces that accommodate seniors. And we can talk through these. Uh, I don't know, my slides are not advancing. I'm sorry. Here we go. Um, so bringing to you, some of you have seen this deck or most of it already, but wanted to bring this slide again, uh, just to show uh, where one Java is. It's kind of situated amongst many waterfront lots. And uh, it's really important to us that we are connected. We're connected back to the neighborhood. We're connected to the water, but also uh, north and south to lots that coming online and having a public access area. And that's a, a slow process, but it's coming. and. Uh, we, we really want to be part of that and the continuation of our little tooth is important. We also are cognizant of the guidelines that were uh, put together a while back. Um, the thought that the waterfront should be more of a meander, there should be furnishing next to the water, not just a kind of a runway esplanade, if you will, and that where possible also incorporate planting near the water. So all these things we looked at. Um, our site is is this. <laughs> As you see, it's bounded by India Street, Java Street, West Street to the east, and then the water to the west. It's inclusive of India Street Pier, but really the waterfront public access area that is in front of uh, uh, city planning is one, the pier as it is, but also this area that you see here, the 11,520 uh, square feet. In addition to that area, this is uh, providing additional open space, which is in yellow here. So it's kind of almost doubling that area, that upland area that's uh, noted as a WPA here. Uh, some of the context, uh, I know you all know the site, but the upper left is Java Street, uh, kind of a cobblestone, a lower lying street, uh, India Street uh, below that. Uh, is, a, is a new street. There's the development to our north that's raised the street a little bit in the sidewalk to the extent they could. To the right is the waterfront today, the kind of the edge broken riprap and concrete and, and you know, and kind of debris. And on the bottom is the pier. Some of the site constraints are the site conditions, the latent condition, windy, having salt spray, waters, the water's edge, keep eroding it. Existing uh, streets are, uh, are low lying uh, as it relates to, uh, you know, elevations of uh, the resiliency. Um, the scale of the site is somewhat tight. Um, additionally, the East River has strong current, it's choppy. Uh, and there are the ferry wakes, and that's sort of a constraint that relates a little bit to the boating conversation. Flood elevation and projected sea level rise are another constraint that's in the forefront of our minds as we uh, develop these sites. And then the DCP zoning requirements, of course, is another layer of uh, requirements that we have to be, uh, you know, mindful of. In terms of programming, so this slide talks to the passive programming that we're kind of looking at here. So one, soft edges, uh, edges that can be inundated uh, periodically, and then a transitional kind of uh, softscape that climbs upland uh, with uh, native planting. Uh, we are proposing a lawn, a kind of a flexible lawn here for picnicking or what have you. Uh, various furnishing for socialization that allow people to, to come together in, in various ways and comfort levels. So looking at picnic tables, looking at lounges, benches, and so on. Uh, we are thinking about a cafe in the building of some sort, some sort of a food and beverage uh, that would also, um, you know, uh, face itself onto the waterfront and participate in that kind of the park's life in a way. Uh, having lounge area, get down, also looking at some ecological education uh, with uh, small um, tidal pools. Active programming, so again, the lawn could be for fitness classes, yoga, tai chi, and all these things that people want to, uh, you know, facilitate and be part of. 
small markets and performances. Uh, we also see the in the waterfront that they could spill over on these street ends of Java and India, given that they are kind of dead ends and could be utilized on weekends and so on. Uh, places for community meetings and community parties, uh, movie nights, family dances, and also workshops that could spill again outside, uh, be it boating, biking, or something like that, that really kind of support uh, activities, uh, local activities. The design is inspired by Greenpoint and the history of uh, boat ship building, um, you know, long history. So we're kind of taking the element of the slip. I mean, obviously our site is small. These piers are huge, but the slip is a kind of an idea. Is something that intrigued us. It's it's a kind of it's always a fascinating getting onto the edge of the slip, right, uh, and, and kind of being immersed in this waterfront. So. We took that and also oriented these slips with uh, views to the water, various uh, directions, and kind of capitalizing on it. And of course, you have the views from the pier that is really a 360, also back back to the neighborhood. Um, so the site plan evolved, and it's this. And so, yeah, some of you have seen it. Uh, I'll start from the top where it says WPA area. So this is a path that would uh, be seamlessly connected to the neighborhood to the neighbor to the north of us. So the Esplanade continues. Uh, we are raising the site a little bit, somewhere between two two and a half feet uh, from uh, from the streets. That's uh, for resiliency measure. So there will be a kind of a gentle slope coming up. If you see my cursor. Uh, where one could continue to the pier or can continue to meander along the waterfront. Along the waterfront, we have another intersecting slip, which will kind of uh, at the at the end of it, at the terminus, it's it drops down and becomes immersive in this uh, kind of garden, riparian garden area. The, the bottom most is a riparian garden intermingle with uh, with uh, boulders and so on. And on top of it is a kind of a transitional, more upland garden. Uh, moving on south, we have a few other slips. Each of them terminates slightly differently. Uh, and we have the stony get down right south of that, uh, the, what we call the prow. Um, stony get down will take you down to the water. Uh, and south of that, we have a smaller area that is actually a platform where we are cutting a kind of a, a window to the water below. And that's where we like to put those tidal pools so people can see how they evolve over time and uh, hopefully life uh, emerges and, 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 you know, and thrives. <laughs> uh, south of that, we have what we call the social alcove, uh, kind of a social seating area. Uh, as well, next to the peer reveal, there's also a kind of a countertop with move, uh, movable uh, stools that one can sit on and uh, enjoy the sunset, uh, coffee, or whatnot. And you will see a little bit more of it in the view. Turning on to Java Street here, we have seating steps which uh, face south with the idea that that too could become a space. So the terminus of Java could become a space that is uh, used also. Uh, and we like that idea, so uh, also uh, a nod to that. Uh, and then incorporating uh, porch swings, these kind of wide four or five person uh, swing. It doesn't swing very much, but it swings enough to kind of give you a feel of uh, being on a porch. Uh, and then the area that looks like a kind of a bosque with plaza, uh, that's what we call that the river perch with the idea that that will be part lounge. There will be a kind of an overlook countertop again with these uh, bar stool like uh, furnishing uh, sitting steps that bring us a little bit higher because we have to bring this area a bit higher to meet the building. Uh, picnic tables, trees and so on. And we can come back to that. Um, softscape wise, so we have the riparian landscape near the river, again, allowed to be inundated in part. And as we go up, uh, transitional uh, plantings and the upland planting. The idea is that the landscape, the softscape feels, as you could see in the images, a little bit tougher, a little bit more wild, uh, not manicured, which we like. Uh, so really, aside from the lawn, everything will feel tougher and native and, you know, uh, 
attract pollinators and, and things like that. We really want to have a, a, a gritty texture to the landscape. Connection to the river, so continuing to encourage people to fish from the pier, use the pier. Uh, the river landing will be a kind of, it's not a full get down, but is a kind of a landing that's perched down uh, below the path a little bit. Uh, we have the stony get down that brings people down to the water. And then the pier reveal, which can be observed from the top with the tidal pools. In a series of, of uh, views, so this is coming in from Java, seeing the social alcove uh, to the left with that peer reveal with a counter uh, and, and stools around uh, and the lawn beyond. Moving a little bit north, we have the get down here. The rip up might be a little bit out of scale, but this is just a visualization of it. But the idea is that people can reach down. Uh, the rip rip also be, will be used as a kind of a, uh, like a curb, if you will, uh, just to kind of stop people from moving uh, too far down. Uh, and you could see the lawn again, with various benches and sitting beyond. This is the river landing immersed in the kind of the riparian garden. Uh, the view from the pier, looking back at the site. So here we see the perch all the way in the back with the picnic table bosque of trees. The intent is to use boulders in the, in the upland as well. So kind of bring that materiality that we have on the edge upland a little bit as kind of a natural places to sit and, and, and to, to play on, as well as uh, using some driftwood, you know, a little bit larger scale driftwood, also uh, similar kind of bringing that materiality of the river um, into the into the landscape. In a bird's eye view of the site with Java on the right, India on the left, kind of seeing the, the full um, full side of it. And uh, I'll let Isaac uh, close with, with the slide, Isaac. Sorry, let me unmute myself. Okay. Uh, thanks, Karen. Just, you know, I think that was a good presentation. We're looking forward to, to, to your, your project um, and your comments, but, you know, just overall, you know, Java, we really view this as sort of a, a important community project that provides a number of benefits. You know, first and foremost, obviously, you know, the waterfront itself. Um, you know, and it's sort of just providing what is sort of you know inaccessible uh, space along the waterfront, as well as sort of connecting the waterfront to its pier. Um, additional benefits, obviously, this the building while we're still in the process of designing and working through it, it will have a significant amount of affordable housing. Um, you know, we're going to take an underutilized warehouse space that's not that's vacant right now and really activated what we hope will be sort of exciting sort of neighborhood enhancing retail uses as well as potential, um, you know, food and beverage concepts that sort of work and create an amenity for the neighborhood. Um, you're also looking at ways to work with sort of local and community educational groups around the waterfront and ways to engage sort of educational opportunities, not only on the pier, but also the waterfront itself. So. Um, we're really excited about this project and we're really excited to bring some, some new exciting space to the waterfront, as well as, you know, in it being a really long-term stakeholder in the Greenpoint neighborhood. So, um, with that, I think we just turn it over to questions and open up for you guys. Yeah, there is a question here for Vinny. Um, let me what? go to the slide that. Clear the, clear the screen. I'd like to start off with questions from the committee and then we'll move into questions from the community. Okay. I have a, a question. Um, this is Trina. Where is the restaurant in relation to the plan and where does the restaurant kind of relate to the, the plaza? Well, the, I may bring it up. So we're looking at the possibility, the restaurants would be sort of the edge of our residential building and wouldn't be into the green space. The cells were potentially, you know, looking to sort of put something that would be, you know, adjacent to the India street and sort of capture traffic coming off the pier. Um, so we're sort of looking sort of that sort of corner there as well as potentially, um, you know, over on Java street as well on the edge of Java street in our building is in addition to that. Would there be outdoor seating that's part of the restaurant or would the outdoor seating be part of the park? Uh, both. We haven't really sort of, we don't have an operator, so we don't, you know, I mean, we, we think there would be benefits to having some outdoor seating, but, you know, the, most of it would be sort of contained either within sort of the restaurant, but there may be opportunities for the sort of eating and outdoor space as well, in the you know, on the edge of the park as well. 
Also, yeah. I jumped in. I jumped in with my question. I want to say how great it looks too. I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing what you've been able to put in this small area. Go ahead, Steve. Thanks, Phil. Um, yeah, thanks a lot for the presentation. Actually, I saw it once before, but it's good to see it again. And yeah, I agree with Trina. It's a really um, just looks like it'll be a very interesting, you know, engaging space. Just the varied, you know, soft shoreline and topography. Um, so yeah, really, really good. Um, yeah, just a couple. One quick question, just to verify: Is Len Lease going to be responsible for maintaining the space, or our Parks Department? Yeah, so it's a privately owned space. So uh, we and our management company will be responsible for maintaining not only the waterfront space but also the pier itself. Okay. And then um, I was just trying to understand how people flow into the space from the street, either from uh, India or Java. Is it just um, just hitting those, I guess, those walkways or um, like I'm looking at India Street where the um, you're beyond those three trees that are. Yeah. There. Can you access the space? There so, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So if you come from the sidewalk, that white space there is actually just a continuation of the sidewalk that should have been gray. And you can come straight on this. There will be a slope here. This is a, a little area that slopes up again because we're raising the waterfront a little bit. Uh, one can also access if there is if there is a cafe here, come through those stairs and come straight to the cafe. Uh, or, or any of the amenities on the perch, so to speak. Uh, one could also, of course, continue to the pier. And if somebody is biking along the waterfront, they can come through, uh, you know, this path here uh, and continue on the waterfront or, you know, or just strolling about. Um, so, so that's on India. Uh, on Java, not shown here, but we will have also a set of stairs we're working on now uh, to come into this. Um, what we call the, the landing area here. Uh, and then there will be a ramp that takes you up to the waterfront here as well on the very southern edge of the waterfront. So connecting kind of seamlessly to the same grade as Java, we're not really raising the street. Uh, we may, if we can, we'll bring it up as much as we can, but it's very minimal. Mm -hmm. uh, the lot to the south is not doing anything, so we can't impact them with the drainage. Yeah, that's a shame um, that we'll have the connection in, into Transmitter Park. You know, that would um, yeah, yeah that'd be ideal. Good. You know, yeah. Um, yeah, and just one thing, I, I think I you know, brought this up the previous time, but um, the, uh, on the on the industry pier, uh, the possibility of replacing the cyclone fence with uh, you know waterfront master plan compliant uh, railing. Yeah, I mean, that's something that we'll, we'll continue to have dialogue. It's not in our current plans, but we've heard that comment and, you know, it's something that we'll continue to have dialogue about. I actually have another question, which I'm. Trina, when Katie has her hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see that. Okay. Go ahead. Let her go. You know, we can keep talking. Go ahead, Katie. Thanks, Trina. Thanks, Phil. Um, I have a couple questions. Um, and I, 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 too, have seen this before, um, so thank you for um, bringing it here again. Um, and also, Isaac, I want to thank you, too, because since we last spoke, um, they, they helped clean up West Street, uh, which had become a crazy dumping ground in recent weeks. So I appreciate that help. Um, but um, a couple of things um, I had also mentioned, and I was curious if if you had followed up. I'm glad Jen Peterson's on the on the on the call. Um, I had suggested getting in touch with the the women's group about activating this um, with um, uh, memorialization and programming, um, which is a a, a years long initiative that uh, the several. Uh, community members have been um, searching for a site to be able to honor um, uh, historical women figures. And so I was curious if you all had a chance to discuss it with that group. Um, a couple other questions I have, um, which are sort of outside parks purview, but um, it's related and that's accessibility in that, um, you know, I live on uh, West in, in India, so I know this block very well. Um, and uh, it's, I find it very problematic that there are no crosswalks, given that this is a major public transportation um, 
route. So, you know, if you cross West street, there are no crosswalks to get to um, either this park or the, the park in front of the green point. Um, so I'm sure that's something that you're looking at. Um, but I think that that's really important for safety. Um, and I'm also very glad. I think it was Steve who said that I'll just echo his about, um, you know, the potential of. Redesigning the pier, because. Uh, you know, as you know, this is such uh, you, you all have done a lot with a little, but it is a small amount of acreage um, for uh, for the building. And so being able to potentially uh, move out and, and capture the pier um, as uh, uh, would be would be amazing. So um, so thank you. I think that that's all the questions I have right now. So, I mean, uh, thanks, Katie. Nice to see you again. Uh, I am planning on, I, you know, the, the women's group of the memorialization. I haven't followed up with that group yet, but I am planning on doing, we think it's a great idea, uh, and would love to continue that conversation and engagement. Feel free to, I've been wanting to do that. It's just on my to-do list and I haven't done it, but it's definitely on, on there. And I think there is opportunities that that could be done in this space here. So I think it's a great suggestion. Um, and we can continue to have that dialogue. Um, and we'll also continue. To, to keep an eye on that adjacent property owner there and making sure that trash uh, can be taken. Uh, you know, obviously the accessibility and the crosswalks, that's, I mean, unfortunately, I mean, something that, you know, will be aligned with you on, you know, pedestrian safety, traffic, we really view this as a pedestrian oriented neighborhood, especially many of our residents. So, you know, we can continue as part of our process, having conversations with DOT, I believe from a permitting and sort of a crosswalk, you know, aspect is really DOT is the one that has to do it, not us. So I can't just make it happen, but I definitely will be aligned with you in having that conversation. So I think it's a good suggestion. And I think, you know, Hero and I can sort of if in our conversation, see if that's a possibility. And I think, you know, more density and more people there and more pedestrians sort of will, you know, encourage them to do that even more so. So hopefully one Java can be part of that solution. Um, and, uh, you know, we're looking as, as I mentioned, Steve, like looking at ways to improve the pier. We think is a significant amenity to other projects. So, um, you know, we're looking to, you know, uh, just to activate and improve it, whether that's through bringing more ways to, to bring educational groups engage with the water from the pier to just actual safety and overall maintenance of it itself. I mean, we own and we're going to be maintaining it. So it's the front door to our project. So I think we agree with you that it's a it's a real opportunity sort of to to improve and, and, and develop additional sort of open space for the neighborhood as well as as the our community. Trina, go ahead. You want to you, you want to have another question you said. My question has to do with accessibility and accessibility to the, the pier during the time because presumably the problem is going to get fixed and the ferry is going to continue to stop there. How how do you plan to keep things keep the route to the ferry open while you're um, while you're building? I mean, we don't anticipate the uh, well. Besides this issue, once the the the, the ferry's back up and running, we don't anticipate any interruptions. We're developing, you know, fencing and site safety plans and um, construction sheds that will ensure that people can access the uh, the pier and ultimately the new floating barge. Um, safely and protected, so we don't anticipate any shutdowns. We, you know, we already have a plan when we're doing demo that would allow us to do that. Um, so, um, you know, it's going to be a combination of construction uh, fencing, sidewalk bridges, and uh, flaggers to ensure that the 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 the, the floating barge and the ferry uh, are accessible and operational throughout the whole entire project. Yeah, that road turned into a real pit during the the when the building next door was built. I mean, it was really like a war zone getting to the ferry, and so just to be great if you if you could make sure that the road, the access to the ferry along the road as well as to the pier, remains open and clean and safe. I mean, of course you can we'll, do that. We'll definitely do our say it again we'll because it didn't feel safe with the your neighbor. Yeah. We'll definitely and, try our best yeah. to do that, and you know again. You know, we'll also make sure that everybody has the one job at lendlease.com. You know, so if you have specific concerns throughout the construction, we try to take people's feedback and safety concerns and, and do as much as we can um, throughout the process. Yeah, I remember the workers at uh, the Greenpoint used to park at the dead end of India Street and fill that up and make it tough to get through. So 
And it's, you know, it's something that could be kept in mind when you get to and they put, phase. They put their construction trailer right at the end of um, India Street that kind of blocked the river. I mean, it was just like this, it, it wasn't nice. Okay. That's great feedback. Thank you. Okay. Um, I have a. You go ahead, Zante, because I don't see anybody else, anybody else's hands. So please go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, well, um, I believe my fellow member said a lot of things. I'm I'm online, so I don't know if I want to uh, make uh, more question. I understand that clearly uh, a lot of the icon they indicate uh, things that are exist somewhere else. So probably we're gonna uh, need to see more detailed design about bench table. And so many other things, and probably a little bit more opportunity uh, to comment this concept. Uh, one thing I overheard is about a restaurant, uh, and, and and I want to have clarification what kind of activity and uh, where that is going to be in regard to this uh, waterfront little park, which uh, you know it still is never going to be uh, sufficient. You know we lacking open space, so it's great uh, that we're going to have this one. And Trina, uh, as mentioned before last night, were until midnight to an SLA uh, committee meeting, not because we we're a member of the committee, but because we are a member of this community and uh, the Greenpoint Coalition uh, has been doing a lot of work trying to contain the number of the license. And so I want to understand um, what kind of activity you envision there, because I, I will fear that I love not to have a restaurant or a bar prevail uh, and impact this park, which is very valuable. You know, we have so many uh, uh, licenses right now. We have lost entirely business diversity in Greenpoint and Frank on Franklin Corridor on Greenpoint Avenue. Uh, practically 95% of the retail storefront right now, some are dying. They all, and they all been substituted during COVID, the one that couldn't, uh, uh, continue to exist by bar and restaurant. So, so this is very critical for this community. I believe even for you, that you're going to develop. Uh, you'll want to make sure they will continue to have a diverse uh, retail uh, environment. It will be uh, not interesting. I mean, for for a, a lively community to live in just an entertainment uh, environment. So, I fear. If you can explain me more, what kind of a, a restaurant, a bar, is a cafeteria? Uh, would be a shame if they will become a destination place, and the benefit of this uh, community park will be uh, taken away by uh, inviting people for the restaurant, for the bar, for a venue, whatever that is. Uh, yeah, thank you. I, I, I think, you know, first off, you know, we're obviously it's a residential building above in front of the space. So, I mean, I think as far as sort of nighttime, the type of uses that go there, it really needs to be, you know, focused on neighborhood focused and, and, and sort of consistent with that. So, I, you know, we don't envision, you know, we haven't selected any operators at all. Right. So, I mean, I think, you know, we do think there's a potential for people that are going back and forth commuting on India Street that may want some sort of cafe coffee place food space there along the along the waterfront. But again, I think, you know, we envision it more as sort of a, you know, a place of work that's sort of neighborhood focused, neighborhood serving. Um, you know, we haven't worked out all the details yet, but I think from a noise and nuisance that's obviously not consistent with our residential building or our neighbors or a commitment to Greenpoint. But we do think, you know, there could be sort of, you know, uses there along the waterfront that sort of would sort of enhance the experience for people that are going to the waterfront and using it. Um, and that's the sort of type of users that we're going to probably target along there. Uh, uh, what's the capacity? Uh, what's the size in square footage? footage. Uh, what would be the capacity uh, of this space? I think we haven't worked out all those details yet. Uh, you don't know the square footage of the restaurant space? Yeah, no, we're, we're going back and forth. We're still working on the program. And the, you know, the waterfront's further ahead of the space there. So we don't know the answer to that. Okay. I mean, I believe this will be, um, uh, at least for the Greenpoint community, uh, uh, a, a very important element. You know, it'd be nice to know uh, a certain point uh, because it will determine also the destiny and the impact on this uh, valuable uh, green space that you are 
going to yeah, create. You know, we, we think, you know, we, we, we value, you know, we really view the, the green space as something that serves the community, right? We wouldn't want to bring in uses that would deter from that. Uh, and also, so you know, you know, there are uh, practically we counted yesterday about 25 licenses within uh, 500 foot. This is the ratio right now, and uh, you know, New York State Legal Authority says there is a 500 foot rule, so no more than three licenses within the 500 foot. So just be aware, you know, this uh, 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 you know it's a trigger element, and is also an element of a lot of community opposition. That's all, but we'll discover later on. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. I see you here, Kevin. I just want to see if there's any more board members who have anything, any questions? Yeah, Phil, I have one more uh, quick question. All right. Thank you. Um, Steve, just wondering, no when you're coming back to the uh, uh, to the board in September, are you seeking waivers for the waterfront space uh, zoning rules? Or? Yes, there will be. Well, as of now, it's in progress, but as of now, we have three waivers. Uh, one is uh, for a screening buffer. There is a requirement to have a dense screen between the WPA area and the private zone. So if you see my cursor, this planter has to be very densely planted with uh, evergreens and species that are taller than four feet. We're seeking waiver from that. So we could have views and a little bit more transparency through this uh, planted area. So that's one waiver. The other waiver, there is a requirement that any concrete area will not be bigger than two by two. So granted, we don't know what material or exactly we're using and how, but we are seeking that because we wanna give it flexibility to how it's evolved. And thirdly, there is a waiver uh, for maintaining the existing guardrail in the pier, which, uh, and not replacing it uh, with new guard, the C rail that's required. That's okay. what we have at the moment. Yeah. Thank you. Hey Phil, can I, can I make a suggestion? Go ahead. That, um, you know, when these come, when these waiver requests have come through in the past, they've gone through the land use committee solely. Right. Potentially have a joint committee meeting uh, between with land use and parks. So part because it's you know it's involving. You know the space design, as well as uh, you know zoning zoning rules. Right, but but she but they have to go to land use for that, right? Right, right. And definitely the land use committee make. But I thought right. maybe we could inform their decision since this is also involving design to a degree. But yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Steve, when, when yeah. I know they're coming, we can ask to to just be part of that meeting. We'll have a joint a joint meeting with them. So because it, it it affects us. Right. Good idea. Good idea. Could I just ask for clarification? Is it 40 feet? The red box is the is that 40 feet across? And so the part above where the trees are, that's extra that so you're giving so that's beyond yes. what, what's required. The WPA area is actually 60 feet. There's 40 feet oh. for the shore public walkway and then additional 20 feet for what is uh, called a supplemental public access area. So it's 60. Uh, we are also not shown here, uh, we didn't designate it for, for this meeting, but there is a 10 foot uh, PAA strip, which is public access area that has no zoning, uh, you know, mandates. Your, your other slide above shows the two, the, the colored one up, maybe I don't know what the slide is. Numbers. It doesn't maybe show the dimensions, seven. but oh, yeah. so, so this is the green is 60. And then there's the yellow at the very narrow, uh, narrowest area is 10. Yeah. And is that mandated or is that where it says additional? Is that something you're that's not too many extra? No, that's extra. That extra is, uh, yeah. 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 So it's beyond. It's beyond. Okay. Go ahead, Kevin. You've been waiting patiently. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, that was one of my questions too, Trina. So thank you. Um, mm -hmm. I guess I just I had a couple questions. One is um, how how much is it being? You said it was being raised. How how high is it being raised? What's the? Do you have like a topographic so, map or anything? I don't have the grading here. We can certainly bring it next time or circulate it. Uh, the the sidewalk is at about seven point four. I want to say at the at the corner, the the east corner of the WPA area, 
we're climbing as we come up. It's at about 8.8 to 9. So you're looking at a foot and a half actually at the beginning. Uh, similarly at Java, we're, uh, except the Java is a little lower. We're starting from 6.4 to climbing to 8.4. Where it comes a little higher is at the very middle here where we have uh, another axis on the perch, which is another inclined slope bringing the perch a little bit higher because we want to mediate the elevation with the building uses. So, uh, so, so the perch is at 12 at the highest point. Okay. Um, and is the back of it is like, basically, does that mean that like the, is the whole back of it at 12 or just the center of it? Is it, is it 12? So the, the building uh, where you see doors and all that, it's 12, uh, at the footing here of this kind of, uh, what I call the PAA sort of a landing here this is a 10 so we are climbing two more feet up on the perch again to its resiliency but it's also because of building codes we have to be higher so you right. know okay um do you have the total square footage of the new public space that's being developed here both the one that you're required to give and the additional what the what the total pub, not counting the pier but what's what is the developed public space what's the total square footage the WPAA area is uh, about 11,500. Um, and then the, I don't have often this area, the additional area. No. Okay. So I guess you don't know the total, the total. I, no. Okay. Sorry. I think we know the public space, but it's probably, yeah, I don't, we, we can get that information. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, uh, that was just kind of the, so nothing bolts. I uh, was wondering with the concrete and the pathways themselves, because there is so much of it, and I and I like it. You know, it, it's it's nice, um, and I I appreciate the kind of connection back to the to the old dock slips. But um, uh, one of my concerns is about materials, because there is a bit of concrete up top and the paths themselves. Um, are you thinking about porous pavers? Um, you know, I I just think about you know the how much that area around Industry Pier was flooding and we talked about that um you know in the water that we're expecting in this space as time goes on um, and i didn't see that much about stormwater retention or rain retention um porous pavers or any types of other material conversation um which i think is really really important here yeah we're we're not there definitely not on the paver material we do know that the we want the slips to feel like they are kind of recognizable as slips you know and, and their vocabulary um but we're not we're not there yet so um, um yeah so maybe next time we can we just don't have it yet we, you, you mean you just you, you have not had a conversation about materials correct except i mean the furnishing we did and the furnishing as they are now they are wood slots with steel support uh galvanized steel or painted steel it could be d um you know we didn't, the paving is not something that's, you know, city planning really mandates, except for that one reg regulation. So we have not yet uh, delved into it. Um, so that's really um, Can I say, can I tap into uh, this, please? Sure. Uh, yeah, actually, as a matter of fact, we have a 2005 uh, uh, waterfront master plan, and, and that's actually mandates. Uh, what kind of paper? There is all uh, uh, vocabulary. Uh, we spoke about that in the past, uh, from railing uh, uh, to the asphalt uh, uh, um, pavers, and so we do have a vocabulary. As a matter of fact, uh, 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 you know, looking at the design, which personally I mentioned before, I see images about things that were happening somewhere else in the icon, but I understood this was a concept. And I mentioned before that uh, I was hoping at a certain point we're entering into the detail, but I consider paramount the idea that we have a master plan uh, from lighting, from railing. Uh, uh, the goal should be that the entire waterfront at a certain point when fully connected should be harmoniously uh, uh, represented by a design language, which is consistent to that master plan that the community uh, work out uh, for, you know, for a long yeah, time. Yeah, Under, you know, understood. The, the, I just want to add that the C-rail around the platform will be the 
the required C rail that you have everywhere, as well as the lighting will be the flushing meadow lighting that's on the pier and everywhere else. So some continuity definitely is there. It's really the paving we have not worked out yet. We will look at the guidelines and see what you had. I, I don't recall uh, off the top. Um, what was no, I, I can confirm the pairing, uh, paving out the uh, asphalt uh, paving. Uh, trust me, the park is actually a very good uh, example. Uh, we have some, uh, I believe, but there is definitely uh, mm -hmm. very clearly described in the in the 2005 master plan you know you know very yeah. well uh, the yeah. asphalt yeah. uh octagonal uh, uh pavers the, the, the hex the, the hex paver yeah the hex paver mm -hmm. uh, they are on the darker gray but they're illustrated yeah. there but so that's yeah. they definitely will uh, ease the path i'm assuming and uh, is something you know uh, we've been advocating for many years uh we spoke extensively uh, me and other yeah. In, you know, in many waterfront uh, uh, design okay. meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I just, I, I, sorry, Phil. I, I, uh, I don't mind that Santi interrupted me because he was agreeing with me. Uh, but I, if I could, I had just, I had two more short things here, and I, I didn't, I just didn't get a response from them um, on it. But I just, yeah, I think the porous papers are really, really important, and I, you know, um, especially in a space where. Obviously, it is compromised with the amount of green space, the amount of concrete that we have to have, um, you know, to have that there, uh, I think is really vital. And, I, you know, I, I just, you know, if there was a letter of support or a vote, you know, that's happening here on this, that if, if it could include that ask um, of the developers um, in recognition that this is an area that, you know, is, is, uh, is you know, deeply vulnerable um, to climate emergency. Um, so, uh, that's just something that if that's possible to add in, in a, in a letter or vote, uh, here, I think it would be, it would be good. And also keeping with the 2005 plan. Um, is there know, a well, porous favor in the plan, the master plan? Sorry. So, Was there a porous favor? I believe so. I believe so. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'll take a look. Um, but I, I guess, uh, and is there any, cause I, I guess connected right to that. Is there any. Um, you know, in terms of some of these spaces that that are green, um, is there any thought to uh, you know rainwater, stormwater retention, um, you know, uh, bioswales um, or other sorts of, especially along the street ends? Um, any any thought towards that? So at the moment, uh, you know, there's no swales right now. We have the riparian garden. We have those uh, gardens that are closer to the water, and those were will be low, so you know water will can go to to towards them. Um, I would say that they would definitely will direct say runoff from say that uh, you know that pathway into planters and so on. But we don't have uh, our, our drainage plan per se uh, yet. Uh, you know. Do you know when you might have that? Um, I think in the fall, for sure, I mean, that's our next, you know, our next thing will be to get more technical on all aspects here. Sure. Yeah, I just, I similarly to the pavers, I think it's just really important for these parks to be building that in, um, and not as an, you know, as an after, after the fact sort of thing. And I, I just think that like, you know, obviously you guys are here now, um, that if that can be kept in mind, um, for any plan that you're bringing back here in the fall. Yeah. Um, I had one more question, uh, and thank you. Uh, uh, just the the benches themselves. I, this is like a question that we've been asking. We asked about the ferry down in South Williamsburg. This question, um, the benches themselves. Is there is there a plan to put um, or include kind of anti homeless architecture on the benches, the separators, um, or will it just be kind of flat bottom? You know, the flat bottom benches. Um, is that something I know you said you had made plans for the furnishings. Um, yeah, do, do yeah. Those include um, separators um, that would stop someone from, you know, inclining, um, you know, people yeah. criticize this sort of stuff in the MTA, you know, anti homeless but architecture. We don't have that. There are armrests and, of course, companion seating and all that, but we don't have anything that uh, divides or, or make it impossible to, to lay on them at the moment. So it's not something that we can't look at. Um, yeah, so so that's that's that, yeah. Okay, all right, great, uh, that's it, thank you. 
Go ahead, Steve. Um, yeah, there are there were a couple of comments uh, in the chat. Go ahead, Steve. One of them, oh. uh, Vinny, Vinny from uh, Piccolo from Parks asked if we could see the one of the slides at the beginning that showed the parcel map. Yeah. Just to see, you got that, Vin? Gotcha. I meant the uh, the other one, just with the different uh, properties next to it labeled, just so I could see. Um, it had like all the oh. little tags of like where it fit in the wood. Yeah. Yeah. Number right. four. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> sure. And then um, Maureen asked about the cat colony. Is it it's still active? Is if it is, will it be relocated? I think we had this conversation early in the discussion, and we were put in contact with somebody who believed we understood, and we were told through those conversations that it wasn't active right now. But I'm happy to get in contact with anybody related to the cat colony if it is if that's information is different than what I've been told. Any more? Anything else, Stephen? Uh, I don't uh, see that. Um, well, Kevin's asking. There's a way. How can we follow up to get the total square footage of the total? Of well, the I gonna, but I, I was going to because I was going to. Kevin had brought up a point about. I, I don't think we can really take a motion on this because it's not a completed project right now. And right? we're really just here. I mean, you could. I mean, we're here just to sort of update. You guys, right. it's not really, right. it's really something that we're coming for support and I, it's just sort of part of our community outreach. So, I don't, I mean, that wasn't really sort of the intent. I mean, I think the, the DCP will formally refer it to its application to the com larger community board in September um, right. for, you know, referral. That's sort of the process, but. Yeah, this Steve, is the. And I think the for, the total square footage that I understand, uh, we should double check, is around eighteen thousand total. Okay. okay. What? So Hero, Steve, Hero, it's texted that to me. Hero is managing it. I think he mentioned that that doesn't include the pier, right, Hero? Right, excluding the pier. So it's um, eleven thousand five hundred for the WPAA, um, just under fourteen thousand for the pier, and then the additional open space is about six thousand square feet. So, so getting back to what I said, what, what, what does the committee want to do? Do you want to make any motions on this right now? What do you want to hold off? Um, yeah, I think because, you know, there was mentioned the design isn't 100% complete. Right. I think that's, would, that's the way I feel. Steve. Yeah. yeah, I feel, I, you know, we could, we could, we could, you said already, we're going to, we're going to come back to it. When they go to land use and all, so we'll get a better feel of what it looks like, and maybe we could we could take our final uh, vote at that time. How's that sound? Yeah, I but I think the things that were brought up at this meeting are things that that we expect to see when or expect to be right. in exactly. some exactly. way when you bring it back. Yeah. So, so yeah, with that, I think we'll hold off. Uh, we'll thank them. Great presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we'll be we'll be re, uh, be coming back to this. In the fall. Thank you. Great. Yeah, I hope Thank your designs you. spread up the waterfront. So. Yeah. Yeah. So we Thank appreciate you. your time looking at the design and giving us the comments and, and your experience along the waterfront is great. So thank you very much. That's what it's thank about. you too for that that slide where you with all the community feedback. That's something mm -hmm. we should give to people. Yeah. Because you really mm -hmm. did hear hear the community and, and the great summary of what what we've been asking for for up and down the waterfront. Mm -hmm. So nice yes, again, we guys. can share this. Have a great night. Stay safe, everybody. Thank great. you. See you, everybody. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye. Our uh, uh, next, uh, next presentation, Kenny, are you ready? Where is she? Yes, I am. Once that's that, that beeping over, stops. <laughs> all over the field. What's the <laughs> Whoever's left wants to hear little old me. Um, I Go just ahead. wanted to uh, let's see. Am I able? I don't know, Phil. Can I um, can I share something? I, I mean, my my main point is to announce <laughs> that under the Cambridge right. Park is open um, right. and show some photos and some upcoming programming. Um, right. Which uh, was a little more relevant on the the la when on the originally scheduled date, which was a couple of days before the opening. But um, okay. uh, but anyway, I, I at the moment I cannot share my photos. Okay. All right. If you just want to make tell us about tell us what's going on. Sure. Um. So uh. 
you know, I, I, I believe all of you have seen um, the designs over the years. I mean, the, the design was finalized uh, back in uh, 2019. Uh, thanks, Maureen. And, um, and so we finally uh, were able to open the full park to the public. Um, and I say the full park because uh, what we call the arm, which is a pedestrian and cycling pathway that connects um, the bike lane on the K bridge. Um, down to the abutment where the larger spaces begin um, that has been open um, since last year. Um, and it has been in use for runners and cyclists and everything else. Um, certainly more increased traffic now that we're open um, 7 days a week dawn to dusk. Um, we had an opening event on June 6th, um, where we had some community um, uh, partners coming with uh, free art making workshops, um, some performances. Uh, we had a reggae show uh, and about overall about 800 people came, which was which was great. Um, uh, uh, with Carolyn Maloney and some board members. And so um, it was a nice way to invite the community in. Um, we also do uh, volunteer opportunities every Sunday. And so we, we begin by offering a guided tour at 11 o'clock uh, for anyone who's interested in seeing the space or hearing about its history, because it is a, a very um, different kind of, of open space. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, try to cultivate um, some interest from the community by um, coordinating volunteer stewardship events, um, working with our team there. Um, we're also um, evolving that to something we're called a, a garden club. Uh, we've had a lot of inquiries from folks who live close to the arm, um, like around Meeker, who are interested in um, and better understanding the planting plan and maintenance of uh, some of the new plantings planted as part as of not only the under the Cambridge Park, but then also just the Cambridge in general. So, you know, you may, you know, the the gardens along Meeker Avenue, for example. Um, and so, uh, you know, we're we are starting a garden club on Wednesday evenings um, that will invite folks to to learn about um, maintaining those gardens. Um, we have a couple of larger events. Um, the, if you recall from our original visioning um, and presentations, um, it is a, a state space and it is exists on the model um, on, on the financial model that we um, are able to generate revenue on site. Um, and that is from uh, largely from events or partnerships uh, where we're able to raise money to be able to pay to maintain the site. Um, and so, uh, you know, our hope is that, um, you know, we can activate the space with a lot of community programming uh, by community. I primarily mean free programming, uh, which is what we have had uh, to date. Um, but uh, uh, we are looking for um, more commercial activities as well, which maybe could like a concert. Um, we're very seriously considering about opening um, a uh, roller rink there this summer or fall uh, on the weekends, um, which we've had really positive feedback from, but that would be a ticketed uh, recreation opportunity. Um, it's a huge space in the skateboarding community. Um, we're having a, a, a skateboarding festival uh, next month, um, as well as a, a July 4th um, a music event and fireworks viewing um, and uh, all of this will be on nbkparks.org. So I'm sorry I, I'm not able to share my photos. The fun. reggae show was super fun. <laughs> and I'm also here just to answer any questions anyone has. Uh, Trina, you're muted. Will July 4th be ticketed? No, it's free. The first ticketed, what is the first ticketed event we have? Honestly, Trina, mo most of them are free so far. Um, you know, the, the reggae program that we did, um, you know, and just to be candid, uh, you know, uh, we've had been able to take advantage of the COVID situation in that 
as many of you who work in parks know, um, it's been difficult to get permitting for events or sound permits for amplified sound. Um, so the, the reggae program is, has been a, a major program on Coney Island, um, but they were unable to get for 10 years, but they were unable to get their permits. And so they sort of, this is a different iteration where it's reggae under the bridge, but yes, it's all free, um, but they're going to be coming back once a month. Um, you know, it, they came in June, they'll come in July and in August. Um, we're doing an emerging, uh, again, free an emerging um, Brooklyn um, musician like compilation um, of various musical genres, um, which is going to be in early August. Um, uh, we're doing a looking at doing a larger concert um, uh, Labor Day weekend. Um, you know, we're definitely paying attention to the sound, um, you know, because we're just starting these and, um, uh, you know, very few people live very close by to the space. Um, you know, when we did the the reggae show, um, we did not have any noise complaints. Um, so I, um, which is great, um, but that's something we're definitely paying attention to as we continue planning. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're really hoping for it to be used as, um, you know, a lot of community programming, showcasing a variety of different open air um, cultural and recreational programs. And the space is amazing. It's yeah, it's nice. You've done yeah, such an amazing you. job, Katie. The last <laughs> thing, um, the, I don't want to say complaint, but the uh, con major concern, um, which is something I brought up with the transportation committee, are, it, are the streets around the park. Um, and um, in my view, uh, major street calming measures that need to be taken by city DOT um in order to help protect the the park users and the truck drivers um for those of you who know the area it's very industrial um but that's something that we are looking at with city dot and some other partners like evergreen and newtown creek alliance are there other parks that cross streets like that where the park can i mean mccarran park does but really i was about to say mccarran does, until osa mapped no, union but, avenue <laughs> Um, and are there other, where you where you can see what other people, other maybe in other cities, have done to do that? I mean, yes, yes. Um, I but this is going to be distinct because because it's not just any street. These are heavily industrial used streets um, that have been in kind of no man's land since they've been operating there for decades, you know, for a generation. Um, and so it's the first time you have people um, and families and children scooting and walking, walking there. So it's just a big, um, you know, we have these big electric signs, um, bring in city DOT down there. Um, but, uh, you know, it is a concern that I'd like to change quickly. Yes. Okay. Thank well, you I very much. Uh, What's up? Yeah, a couple of questions, Katie. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, and a few things. Uh, um, do you, uh, do you have an idea how many of these, uh, events you are planning or you envision, uh, to do a month or the, will be a limit, uh, uh, how many will be in a month? Uh, one question. And uh, will they happen during only the summer time? I mean, probably I know it's evolving, and so it's not uh, fully clear. But just for community uh, additional input, you know, be great. Probably uh, when that is more clear to you to have a better idea. So I mean, at the uh, we're we're not so much looking at quantity, but what makes sense at the moment. And at the moment, what makes sense is um, uh, looking at Sundays um, because the industry that's around there they're open the majority of waking hours Monday through Saturday. And so until we feel a little bit better about essentially like the public and the the businesses working together, you know, it's still very new. We're really focusing on Sundays at the moment. Um, and so that would, if, if we were to program every Sunday, that would be four times a month. Um, the first time we're doing beyond that, I think is the fall where we have a, a, a light installation festival that is supposed to take place 
uh, over three nights. Um, and, you know, that's not a music show. That's a, an art show using light as a medium, which we thought would be a good um, approach to the space artistically. Um, and so, yeah, so in the future, um, you know, it's, uh, it's hard to say, I mean, but then again, you know, if you're at the roller rink would be more than that. Right. So I don't know if you mean just any program, uh, cause that would be a recreational feature that, um, you know, if it, it would probably be Saturdays and Sundays. No, I mean, one thought it was because I believe you express, uh, uh, I was glad you did the same concern. Uh, of which, uh, you know, it was sound. And I remember mm -hmm. uh, when uh, Open Space Alliance and, I, and you were, you, you didn't have a position at the time with organization when there were concerts on, uh, on Kent, and, you know, and definitely there is a different density, different population, uh, you know, it generate, it became controversial at a certain point, you know, there were community issue and, and so that's why, so I don't know exactly any detail there and definitely on you know, the good things is there is an industrial area and you just mentioned that, but there is also some residents there. Um, so I was concerned and I know you're not aware fully, you know, your sounds, unfortunately, uh, travel, you know, for us living on the other side of Greenpoint when the concert were on Kent, uh, you know, for the people that were here and the one that were not uh, in the Hamptons or somewhere else. You know, that was definitely, um, you know, was an issue. I remember, you know, I was personally affected, so I would not be affected. Yeah, for by sure. I mean, I was, I was, I wasn't, um, working at OSA, but I was very involved with OSA at the time. Um, yeah. And I, I mean, I, you know, I could hear the concerts from, from my place and I'm like, again, on Western India. So, um, and I know, yeah, and I know the, re the repercussions. Um, and so. Um, I was very pleased at, you know, our, our reggae show, uh, which was using about, um, you know, 200 amps. Um, and once we went into the second parcel, uh, you couldn't really hear it. So, um, uh, so I was, I was happy about that. The, when, when you can hear, um, when you can hear things that are happening, um, cause that's something we were paying attention to. And when I say things, I mean, you guys all know and have heard of like those roving car gangs and things like that. And they're always playing really loud music and you don't know where it's coming from. Um, and, you know, sometimes I was concerned. This is when the park was closed. I was concerned because I would see on Twitter, oh, uh, you know, someone's parting it under the K. So go over there thinking someone broke in. It's actually happening in Queens. Uh, the, whatever they were doing. Um, but, um, but yeah, so I'm very well, it's the, very aware that sound travels. Um, but, um, uh, so it's something that we're paying attention to. Um, and I think that, you know, this is, we're lucky that people live far away. Um, and if we are disturbing those people, um, you know, we'll, uh, figure out how to move forward and, um, certainly be in contact with them because many of them have reached out about our garden club. So hopefully they'll be on our team and comfortable just giving us a call and letting us know they have an issue. Yeah. And also, you know, I. Asante, you're on mute. I forgot that. Yeah, no, definitely, you know, you, you answer already uh, to several points, uh, a genuine concern, you know, I know there are portion of community may be a little bit more vulnerable, probably we uh, kind of privilege here, we have the ability to be more verbal, you know, and, uh, and you know, and make sure, you know, things were changed. So I want to make sure also, you know, that something like that can be under your attention, you know, and make sure that, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The more vulnerable portion of community, you know, kind of regard it. That's all. Okay, we're good. Thank you. Okay, okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. We don't, we have our agenda finished. Steve, I think you have something. Yeah, mm -hmm. thanks, Phil. Uh, you have a new business item. Um, uh, Ward Dennis is here from Friends of Bushland Park. And Hi, Ward. How you doing? Hey. Hey, Phil. Good to everyone. see you. Um, Good to see you yeah, all. Yeah, the Santa reward. You can you can explain uh, what the the request and initiative. Go ahead, Ward. Sure. Um, uh, this is a request uh, 
been working with uh, Steve Levin on this for for a while. Uh, it's a request to name the hill, the knoll at the west end of Bushwick Inlet Park soccer field in honor of Seamus Wood. Uh, Seamus was an 11 year old uh, kid from the neighborhood who died very suddenly uh, about three years ago. Uh, he was very involved. He was a student at PS 84, uh, very involved in athletics, uh, GWYSL, FC Select, uh, Little League. He was one of the Mustangs. Uh, so he was very involved in sports, uh, you know, spent a lot of his life uh, active on the soccer field there at Bushwick Inlet Park. And uh, Steve uh, suggested a few years ago uh, naming that uh, Noel in, in his honor. Uh, his parents, Deb and Will, who are very good friends of mine, are very supportive of it. Uh, if anybody remembers NYC Bikes on Havemeyer Street, they were the longtime owners of that as well. Um, and their their daughter is a, a classmate of my son, so I've known them for many years. Uh, so this is just a small renaming request. Uh, I sent a letter that we have drafted. A uh, number of community groups have already signed on to it. Uh, a lot of them are represented here. So uh, North Brooklyn Parks Alliance, Friends of Bushwick Inlet Park, um, uh, GWYSL, FC Select, uh, have all signed on. Uh, so the request really is to ask that the community board sign on. If we can put the letter on your letterhead, uh, that would be great. It's a, the letter is to the parks commissioner. Uh, Steve Levin had a number of conversations with parks uh, over in, I guess, April, May or so. Uh, and they said, well, yeah, but you know, uh, we'd really like to see community support for this. So uh, we have gone out and asked for community support, and I'm asking for your support as well. Yeah, I, I I read the letter. Um, and and I did have a I did have a slide. I don't know if I can put it up or oh. Steve can put it up, but it it's really you know if you know Bushwick Inlet Park, it's that uh, little hillock at the west end of the park, sort of overlooking the ball field on one side and the river on the other. If you have it, you can put it up. But Ward, I, I think it's a, I think it's a great idea, Ward. I think it's so. Thank you, Phil. You know, so appropriate. Would you like to read the letter, Phil? I have it. Yeah, uh, I'd like to. See, I thought it was wonderful. So go ahead. Okay, thanks. All right, the uh, dear Commissioner Silver, the undersigned groups representing the Williamsburg and Greenpoint communities submit this letter in enthusiastic support of the re renaming of the Knoll at Bushwick Inlet Park in honor of Seamus Wood. Jameson Knoll would rename an interior feature of Bushwick Inlet Park in honor of a young child who died suddenly in 2018 at the age of 11. In his brief time with us, Seamus benefited greatly from the parks and open space of North Brooklyn. Seamus played in the Greenpoint Williamsburg Youth Soccer League, um, Football Club Select, and Williamsburg Little League. His athleticism took him to Bushwick Inlet Park, McCarran Park, Sternberg Park, and even the William Sheridan Playground at PS84. In all of these venues, Seamus' athletic prowess was always on display, but so too was his spirit for play and his compassion for others. All the parks and playgrounds in North Brooklyn, Bushwick Inlet Park is where he spent more time than any other. Following his death in 2018, the Wood family and local residents began a tradition of holding Seamus' field day at Bushwick Inlet Park. Sadly, COVID canceled the 2020 version of Seamus' field day, but we, want to look, but we all look forward to gathering again this year for an afternoon of fun and games in Bushwick in the park. The knoll at the west end of the park overlooking the soccer field where Seamus excelled in life and where a community gathers to re remember him each year is a place of repose and reflection, the perfect location to honor Seamus' memory. Based on the strong enthusiastic support of the community and lo local elected officials and on Seamus' wood, Seamus wood um, Strong affiliation with Bushwick Inlet Park during his life and beyond. We ask that you approve the, the renaming of this interior feature, Seamus' Knoll, in his honor. As you near your last days at the Arsenal, we'd also like to take this opportunity to thank, opportunity to thank you for your commitment to the city of New York over, over the uh, past almost seven years. 
through programs such as the Open Parks Initiative, you've championed a more vibrant, open, and inclusive park system that has benefited all New Yorkers. Wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors, and we thank you for your consideration of this request. Yours sincerely, QB Board 1 Brooklyn, North Brooklyn Parks Alliance, Friends of Bush Arena Park, Greenpoint Williamsburg Youth Soccer League, FC Select, North Brooklyn Neighbors, and Williamsburg Little League. That's it. I, I would like to make. And embarrassingly, I forgot to mention North Brooklyn Neighbors, but. Um, wait, wait, yes, wait. Yes, Can yes, you yes. change the last one sentence in that letter, Steve? I think it would be after you're talking to Silver, right? Yeah, you do remember that he has been the sole person that has stopped the women's swim and he stood up, you know, and blocked the women's swim. So we can hire. Can you work it in a way that it's not saying he's so wonderful on everything? He's not. He didn't. <laughs> and, uh, and you would have other people um, disagreeing with the letter there. Jan, Jan I, I, I will. I will see what I can do. I'm also I this letter was written uh a few weeks back uh and i'm not sure when silver is actually leaving so this may be addressed to uh his interim replacement in which case we would probably be less effusive at the end yeah i mean uh, he's done many good things i understand yeah, that is a, the yeah. difficulty but you have a whole group that spent four years and believe me steve i mean i cannot believe that steve levin and lenthal and Rob, Rabbi Niederman and the rest that all listened to him at other meetings, he was horrible. And I know many people like him and what good things he's done. He's been a Pratt guy. I know all that. But, you know, just mitigate that a little bit. That's all I'm asking. Well, the thing yeah, is, no, let's remember what. Understood. But, Jan, let's remember what this letter is for. You know, we're, we're trying, we want Mitchell Silver to approve this request. So it's not going to, he's going to approve it. It's not hard, Steve. I'm just yeah. saying, sub do, just do it down a little bit. Don't give him too much about that he did everybody. He didn't well, include it. He was very anti-Semitic. I mean, it's not a good thing. Um, but you can change that without hurting what you're trying to do, Steve. Well, I mean, I, I, I have to it's refer one to, sentence, the, to, one to the authors. <laughs> That's all one sentence in there. <laughs> Um, How many, uh, do you have a quorum tonight? I'm, I'm I'll, 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 I'll work. I'll work on it. Well, it says, says we want to. Yeah, we got to vote matter, on we, the essence of the letter. We can, so. on, we, can, we can vote on the essence of the letter because we're short. Oh, by that's one right. Of, of that's a quorum. But I, 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 regardless of of what's going on now, I thought it was a wonderful idea. It yeah. should be about yeah. about the. It is the, a wonderful yeah. idea. It should be about the idea, Jan, and not. Taking it to another level. I mean, we're trying to, you know, we're trying to do something nice here. But I know, but I don't think I'm hurting that intent, Phil. Well, we're trying to do something nice for the young kid, for this kid. Uh, you know, for democracy. So I, I know it's very hard for progressive people to have democracy. We have, I, we can have different opinions and not I be. Know, I know that, but I don't need I, to be I, insulted because. Can I, I make a motion thing. to approve the letter with a thought to modifying the intent of the um, of the I'll second yeah. that. I'll second. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Well, you have no quorum. You could do a consensus vote, but you have so no quorum. Consensus vote. I, have, I think I have seven members available. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. So, yeah, we, we have a consensus. Thank you, Jerry. And then, Mary, did you vote? Did you have your hand up? <laughs> yeah. Mary, Mary's, I got Mary down. Okay. Hey, Phil, could I ask um, Vinny a couple of questions? Yeah, but I was going to ask Vinny if he has any updates. Okay. Or anybody could, could have an update with him now. What's up, guys? Yeah, hey, uh, Vinny, do you have any news on uh, this, where the Motiva uh, project is at? Is it still in design? Has it moved into procurement yet? Uh, I do not have an update on that. Uh, the one property I can give you an update on tonight is uh, phase two of LaGuardia Playground. The board got sent a letter today yes. that it's yes. going under on Monday. We have finally reached a uh, start and we're gonna have the fence up and breaking ground on Monday to get that completely redone. So I'm very excited about that. Hey, Vinny, I saw that announcement. So that's that's great, congratulations. Um, I was curious, have you, have you all 
talk to El Puente about the that update? Um, I'm not sure if they were on the initial outreach. I can look into that though. Okay, thank you. Could you also ask about Motiva and see if there's any update about Motiva? Yeah, I can. I can definitely. I'll send an email once we get off. Uh, once we get off chat, I'll send an email to our capital team and see if El Puente was consulted about LaGuardia and an update on Motiva for you. That's not a problem. Any? Did you say when the pool, net pool, is going to open? No, I did not. I did not. I asked, and I was not given an answer yet. Um, and what is, is the is, are any indoor pools opening in the city? Uh, there, there is definitely like a case by case basis of some recreation centers reopening. It's not it's not wholesale yet. It, they're, they're sort of coming online one at a time. And you, you see, that's why we're watching it closely because we keep wondering how you're moving on that pool. Lots it's not. It's people. not me. It's not my decision. But yes, I I, I hear you, and I made them. I made them aware. There of the, was um, I, 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 there was a letter sent to the community board, I know. Uh, response regarding Metropolitan Pool. I just want to make sure you saw that. I didn't see the letter back. The response, no. This was on Monday, as you're probably aware. On Monday, June fourteenth, the first phase. Do you want me to read it? But just say when. I think it's when well, is the pool open? Doesn't say when. Yeah, that's the real issue. You know, and the feeling is people are really watching closely and this goes to you, Steve and others that were just getting a little worried about what I'm saying is that there's a lot of concern that people are really not, they're trying to downgrade this pool and forget this women's swim that this, the Met pool in general, that they're running it into the ground by not programming properly, not using it properly and opening it up and people are not getting that. So they're, and now people need recreation and water is one of the big things. So I'm just saying there's bigger issues besides just the women's swim that people are quite concerned about and have been for a while. So just wanna put that down. And one small other gender issue since I'm here is that this is very small. The we long time ago approved the Francis Hamburger Park by Lindsay. Do you remember that? Uh, um, yes. Bill? yes. Never, yeah. never does the Parks Department call it the Francis Hamburger Park. It's not Hamburger Park. It's Francis Hamburger, and it's purposely it was named that after. And you and uh, probably Phil and I are the only two people on here that knew Francis Hamburger, right? But she was an outstanding leader for a long time, and we wanted to make sure that people saw that this woman that fought for this park and did all this work in Lindsay was honored. And then they keep taking the name away. So if we could just put in the minutes that we would appreciate if the Parks Department not only changed the sign, because we had to spend a year trying to get them to put the proper sign up, but that they would call it that. So, Definitely, definitely. One step at a time for all of us. Um, that could bring up one one more thing. Um, folks are probably aware, you know, it was a horrible tragedy at Domino Park with that gentleman who uh, he was, I guess, trying to retrieve a, 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 ball, a volleyball and he, he fell into the river and drowned. Wow. Um, but there was there was no um, life, you know, uh, portable uh, flotation devices or anything like that available. So I'm just wondering if you know, parks department consider installing those in the in the waterfront parks. Um, you know, you know to, to happen in North Brooklyn and North Brooklyn, like in Transmit or North Newtown Barge, et cetera. So at the end of um, Manhattan Avenue, the boat launch. Steve, Do you think just we should write a letter. What Sorry. does that happen, Steve? Um, what I understand is that this man was playing volleyball. Right. And he went to try and, you know, to catch a ball and he he went over the railing into the river. And I guess the currents are so strong and chaotic wow. there that he I don't know where he was sucked in, but he he, he drowned. And I don't know if there were other extenuating circumstances. Right. I was made aware that if I understand, but maybe any can correct me that there was no like life preserving equipment there that so someone could have thrown right. into him. Right. So. Well, Domino's Domino's 100% out of our purview, but um, as far as life-saving apparatus, are you talking about 
like one of the red ice ladders? Are you talking about a ring? What, what are you, what do you think it's uh, Well, ring initially comes to mind. You know, it's just a flotation device or some, something that could be thrown to a person or someone could take into the water to help someone. Um, but I don't know if anything beyond that would, you know, uh, but that's why I'm thinking at the end of Manhattan Avenue, the boat launch, they have a life preserver there with a rope. Um, that that might be appropriate. I, I don't know. I don't know if that would have made a difference with that domino, um, but it just came to mind. You know, but you know what, Steve? It's a, it's a great idea. We, you know, this is the first time it's been brought up, but it's a good idea maybe to implement it into all all these parks that are opening up along the waterfront now. And we should tell them this is this happened here. Why don't it, it's just something to add on. Should explore it, then come back with us and tell us what they think needs to be done, because that's right. This is uh, new things, more yeah. waterfront, and we're opening up parks all over the waterfront. So yeah, that's right. Uh, safety, safety is the number one issue here. So guess what? Unmute my friend. They, what? They got unmute you, Ward. Sorry. There you go. I, I thought I had unmuted. Since I'm here, I seem to remember that Hudson River Park has uh, some kind of like flotation devices, throwable life sling kind of things. Um, I, I know I've seen them in other parks on, particularly on the Esplanade where you have like the railings and you have that hard edge where people can go over. Yeah, and I I think uh, from what I understand from this the, from the news that like Hudson River Park, it's also it's like the pier structure too, you know, so where where he would he like went under it and, and couldn't hold on or you know, so not yeah. uh, not to say not to have it at like Bushwick and Lip Park where there's the step down, right? But if that would be much more difficult than, you know, if you if you're further out in the in a pier situation and get under this structure. Um, I think it's, it's a, a great idea. Yeah. It's a good safety. It's a good safety item. So I think it's good to add on. Yes, Kevin. Go ahead. Thanks, uh, Vinny. I, I know last time, just because this is the last parks meeting before the the summer. Uh, last time, or the last two meetings, uh, I brought up that the cone triangle down at Division in Bedford uh, that had been locked. That little triangle green space that had been locked out all of COVID and continued to be locked. And Mary said there was, you know, that that. Maybe y'all would be working to get an update on that, what the deal with that was, or whether it could be opened. Do you have any update on that, Vinny? Yeah. Um, sorry, I think that kind of got lost in the shuffle when it switched over from me to Mary as the primary. Um, I, I had mentioned, uh, after conferring with the staff, that it was beginning to be locked because of a strict amount of dog overuse in the area that was affecting the parcel. But we're going to open it on a trial basis and see, you know, um, if, it, if you're telling me it's still not open, then, uh, I'll get that lock clip for you, but, um, okay. I had yeah, given I'm not, I'm not, I'd not been, yeah, I'd not been down there probably since, you know, in a couple weeks, but I, uh, but yeah. You've got Kevin, I think you've got my email. Just follow up with me. If it's still locked, I'll get it clipped for you this week. Okay. Great. Thanks, Vinny. Okay, everybody. We're good. Thank you very much. Great meeting everybody. Ward, nice to see you, pal. Bill, thank said, you so much. Good to see everybody. Let me just say, me just say this. You. I hope this is our last meeting like this. I hope next time we meet, we're together again. Yeah, that would be a beautiful thing. <laughs> it would be. It really would. Yeah. Stay safe.